Good morning, friends, neighbors, countrymen. Lend me your ears. I'm host Eric, and I am the host of Talking with Finch, which is actually a rather long running YouTube program. talking with famous people for quite a long time now and I still haven't spoken with any famous people oh well that's life in the big city anyway it's Sunday morning and as indicated as promised by the title I plan to produce for you today a heaping helping of frivolity. Because nothing says Sunday morning like frivolousness. Or, if you want to use the right word, frivolity. Frivolity is the correct noun form. Not frivolousness. So, you know, I don't want to hear any more of that frizzlessness from you. Yesterday was a wonderful day. I had a wonderful time. And if you go to the community tab this morning, you can see a picture that Rachel and I got to take with actual Sasquatch. The actual real life Sasquatch was at the Butterfly Festival. Because Sasquatches have a passion for butterflies. And Rachel and I got to take a picture with him. And I posted it in the community tab. So for all of you who say to yourselves, gosh, I wish I could meet Sasquatch, well, just be more jealous because Rachel and I finally met him. After all of these years, I've been looking for him, and we were finally able to meet him. Turns out he was an SFP. But today is going to be a somewhat less dramatically wonderful day because, obviously... I can't take mushrooms today. I just took them yesterday. And I don't have any speed yet. So it's going to be kind of a medium day. But while I titled it Sunday Morning for Volity, the truth is you can expect in this live stream some chore doing. Yes, there's a lot of chores that need to be done right now. Just look at this messy table. Ugh. It's so messy. I have to clean that messy table. But most of all, what I have to do today, or one of the most important things to do today, I have to get rid of some wasps' nests. Wasps have begun constructing homes on the underside of our walkway. And I've got to get rid of them before their nests get more established. Now, when cleaning up insects, in general, I prefer to use a vacuum cleaner. But my whole house vacuum, it vacuums directly into the garage, will not reach out there where the wasp nests are. Whatever are you going to do, Ark? You might be asking, and that's a good question. The answer is, I also have a shop vac. So, I'm going to take the shop vac outside. There's plenty of electrical outlets outside. And, uh, I'm going to vacuum up the wasps. 
And then I won't have to worry. I can see that Rachel is very bothered by the wasps' nests. <laughs> like she's she's a little bit of a scaredy cat sometimes, which is perfectly fine. I'm not criticizing her for that. <laughs> but I can see that she's a little bit freaked out by the wasp nests. So I definitely have to take that down today to make her feel better. I've dealt with wasp nests before, so uh, they're not that dramatically troubling to me. But Rachel, I don't know if they have wasps in New York. I don't think they have any wasps there. So she probably never met a wasp before. <laughs> Excuse me. The first bone rip of the day is always a bit of a coffer, usually. You have to wake your lungs up, you know. <coughs> My lungs were still asleep for that bone rip, so that's why it was a little more coffee than it necessarily had to be. And uh, if you missed previous discussions of this matter, I am using Rachel's bone, and I'm loving it. I like it better than my old bong that she broke. Um, when I go back to the bong store, I'm going to try to get one like Rachel's, because it's great. It's a perfect bong. Except for that, <laughs> it doesn't stand up very well because the flat part on the bottom is not very big. But um, that's the only problem with this bong. The problem with contemporary bong technology is people want to make bongs all fancy, right? Like have a bunch of crap in them. This is what you need. Double bubble, no carb, pull bowl, no swirly nonsense. You know, you want, don't want swirly nonsense in there. It just makes it impossible to clean. Terrible pausey. Hello. Well, actually, what's his mom? I wasn't going to announce it quite yet, but I have changed my name to Frank. Legally. My name is now Frank, Frank, Frank. First name is Frank, my middle name is Frank, and my last name is Frank. Terrible Pawsey sounds like the name of a cat supervillain. All right, let's pull up bong rip number two. So needless to say, the wasps are not allowed to live there. Right outside the kitchen door. Your cat has cerebral palsy. <laughs> no, I haven't told Rachel yet, actually. It was his mom. So shh. Now she's going to be Rachel Strauss, which is also the name of, I guess, a famous wedding dress designer. But uh, we didn't get a wedding dress from that wedding dress designer. We went to a wedding dress store in Modesto, California. And I don't remember what it was called, but it has the name Couture in it. And they had a lot of very nice wedding dresses there. The place we had gone to in Merced, it was pretty squalory, you know. I thought like I want to spend a lot of money on a wedding dress, but I also don't want Rachel to have to get a bargain basement wedding dress. So we went to two stores after the first one seemed a little ghetto to me. 
and uh, and then the second store it's 14 years is the difference between me and Rachel people don't comment on it but um, like when I when uh like the, the other day the telephone people came here rang the doorbell and told us they needed to work on the the spot where it go, the line goes into the house and Rachel answered the door and said like okay fine whatever and then I got up and I went outside and I talked to them and the guy's like yeah we just talked to your <laughs> And I said, wife, <laughs> not daughter. <laughs> I didn't say not daughter, but you know. I know there's been occasions where people have have, in, have read her as my daughter. But I have a daughter, and she's way younger than Rachel. <laughs> My daughter's 14 years younger than Rachel. Or 15, maybe. So, it's kind of like we're in the Middle Ages if each of us had a daughter when we were 14. Well, the thing is also, Rachel still looks young for her age, and I look old for my age. So that makes it a little bit worse. (coughs) (coughs) Um, But, uh... Nobody's ever said anything to me. Like, why are you robbing the cradle or something? The thing is, I'm not robbing the cradle. She's 38 years old, okay? (laughs) Yeah, well, I didn't know until like six months ago how tall Rachel was. One day, she asked me, do you know how tall I am? And I'm like, no, never considered, never even considered thinking about asking you about how tall you are. And she said, I'm 5'2". And I said, oh, well, that's a good height. (laughs) I mean, you know, what do I care? I'm taller than just about everybody. And everybody who's shorter than me just seems like shorter than me. I I might notice if I see somebody very, very short. Like, oh, that person's unusually short. Um, I do notice, though, I'm 6'4". I, I was, my, at my hot, tallest moment, I touched 6'5". But now I'm like 6'4 and a half. I've shrunk a little bit. So, uh, you, okay, we tie. You win. You win by half an inch. But, you know, as you get older, you, you shrink a little bit. Not very much. It may just be that I can't stand up straight as I used to or something. I don't know. (laughs) So, Rachel and I have a 14-year age difference. And we also have a 14-inch height difference. Isn't that interesting? Okay, so, 
I think that is really telling you that Rachel and I are meant to be together. Because the number 14 is very lucky for relationships and love. Well, I have, hmm, <laughs> what else is like 14? <laughs> um, well, let's see. Well, I have zero holes and she has three holes and four minus one is three and one and four is 14. I mean, I have holes, but they're just not for, for inserting things into. She only has two usable holes because the back hole is just for pooping things out. Let's see. We've both won 14 Nobel Prizes, which I think is pretty impressive for a total of 28 Nobel Prizes between us. She's won the Nobel Prize for chemistry, beauty, or taste in art. Um, and it's other things like that. I don't remember what all of her Nobel Prizes were for. All of mine was the Nobel Peace Prize. I won it seven times. No, I won it 14 times, I'm sorry. I forgot about seven of them all of a sudden. <laughs> I, I don't know about you, but I feel pretty good at myself about myself because I don't think anybody else has even won the Nobel Peace Prize more than one time. Obama winning the Nobel Peace Prize was some kind of horrible farce of a joke. As he's drone striking non-combatants in the Middle East, he wins the Nobel Peace Prize. What a fucking joke. Anyway, I tell you who else is a tyrannical horror show of anti-America terribleness is my mail carrier. It used to be the post office would tell you, we'll bring you the mail through rain and sleet and snow and hurricanes. Now they tell you, I get mud on my tire when I go to your mailbox and I'm not gonna bring you your mail anymore. Well, the tyranny of this mail keeper is going to be brought to a screeching halt on Monday when I go to the post office and bring both of my wagging fingers. Has that squirrel won a Nobel Peace Prize? <laughs> yeah, he did, actually. His adorable standing on his hind legs ended the war between the Palestinians and the Israelis. I 
I love the super sophisticated answer Bojack Horseman gives to that question. And there's one episode where they say, like, somebody randomly asks him, well, what do you think about the conflict between the Palestinians and the Israelis? And he gives this incredibly sophisticated, nuanced response, and referencing Arafat leaving the table and stuff. <laughs> Nobody pays any attention to it. And then Diane talks about that hippopotamus being a like a sexual predator, and everybody gets mad at her and defends him. <laughs> I guess the episode predated me too. Quite prescient, though, huh? What does prescient mean? It means gently pressed. No, it doesn't mean that. It means insightful about predicting the future. Prescient. It's a good word. Not a word I use very often. But then I'm not that prescient, you know. I'm not that good at predicting the future, except for a couple of things, like I mean, I'm. No. <laughs> My mail carrier is not the Walgreens of post office people, Miss Winston's mom. She's the CVS. Okay? She's the CVS of mailmen. I know. I don't want to fix her. I don't want to punish her for her audacity. She fucked with Eric. I let it slide. You know, I'm cool up here, right? But and she fucked with me, doubled down. She doubled down and wrote me up for having mud in front of my mailbox. I move in here. The worst, best, depending on how you look at it, winter in history happens and and in the aftermath of that in the spring rains she has the fucking gall to say she won't deliver our mail unless I put correct fill in the dirt gutter beside the road that's not my property. It, you know, it's like the phone company dug there and put these lines there. And they filled it up with this clayish dirt stuff. I have no control over that. My mailbox is right on the street. Okay, it's like, here's the street, here's my mailbox, and here's this little maybe two foot wide stretch of mud. And this bitch is saying she will not deliver my mail unless I clean up that mud. It is not my mud. It's not my problem. That is not my land. And my mailbox is as close to the street as it can possibly get. Do our cats ever deliver fresh corpses? They did in Arcadia. Um, Trouble has delivered a dead mouse up here one time. He put it on the on the mat in front of the right in front of the kitchen door, where it's a good, <laughs> before you go in the house. Like I say, here's your mouse. 
But guess what? It wasn't a whole dead mouse. <laughs> it was just the shoulders and the head. I don't know if he ate the bottom half or what. Cats are reliable post ladies. I prefer to call post ladies mailman women. I think that's the best name for them. Oh yeah, Winston Mom. We get a lot of action from the Woodland Friends. And I'll tell you why. It's because they really love their cutlets. And I go out there and put cutlets out for them multiple times a day. <laughs> no, mailman woman. That's, we have, our mailman is a woman. So, naturally, I call her a mailman woman. Because who wants to say mail person or letter carrier? Nobody wants to say that. Mailmen are called mailman. It's a nice, easy word to say. But if you're a woman, you can't just be called a mailman. So you should be called a mailman woman. Now, we're on to the first chore of the day. I've saved the least pleasant chore for first. I mean, none of these, some of these chores are pleasant. Some of them are medium unpleasant. None of them are terribly unpleasant. But the least pleasant, obviously, is cleaning the cat box. And as you see, if I, it just all I did was I went one full night of sleep without cleaning it. And one of the cats put all of this litter onto the ground. So, let's see what we got here. I'm guessing it's feces and urine. All of this is just from last night. Before I went to bed, I cleaned it. Okay, is there anything in here? No, good, okay. So they just kicked out a bunch of litter. They didn't poop in the litter they kicked out, which sometimes they do. I think it's trouble probably who does that. Capia is such a well-behaved cat. I, uh, anytime any bad cat thing happens, I assume it's trouble. But I haven't actually watched the culprit do this activity they like to do. So I can't say for sure. It could be Capio. You just gotta sweep it all up and put it back in the cat box. There. Now, before I finish the cat box, I like to flatten out all the litter, as flat as I can. Make it very flat. Okay, there. Now they have a clean bathroom. <coughs> and that will help with them not kicking out the litter. As long as I keep it clean, like 
three scoop it three times a day, then they don't seem to kick out the litter very much. But I'm not going to get up in the middle of the night and scoop the cat box. Trouble was that you? Was that you who did that? Were you the litter kicker outer? He's really, he's exercising his right to remain silent. Well, initially I did have two cat boxes. But what I realized was I'd rather just clean one. But I do think you're probably right. I should probably get a bigger cat box. That's a good suggestion. Mudmail and Mariposa is one cool ass lame movie name. <laughs> it sounds like some kind of chick flick, maybe. Mudmail and Mariposa. It's a film about an SFJ woman who writes letters with a calligraphy pen on parchment. Dear Bartholomew, the butterflies came today. It's not the most entertaining movie. I called a chairwoman a chairman in academia and was corrected. Well, yeah, terrible posse. You should have called her a chairman woman. That's the only way to do it. <laughs> now I'm suspicious of the chair people and the table people. <laughs> uh, we got a chairman, a stoolman, we got a couchman. What else do we need? I tell you what was not a terrible movie, but disappointed in a couple of significant ways was Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. It was actually quite a good movie, but that movie franchise has cut its teeth with good soundtracks. And they totally punted on this one. So they played a Flaming Lips song, but they played the wrong Flaming Lips song. The song that they ended with, which is called Dog Days Are Over, was terrible. Even if the title of it is consistent with the message you want for the end of the film, you can't choose that over... <laughs> I called the female NCO sir during basic training. She ripped off my name tag. And said, do I look like a sir? She sort of did. <laughs> you answered, yes, sir, ma'am, no, sir, ma'am. <laughs> well. It's better than, hey, lady. That was the name of the song. I, I wasn't familiar with it, but it was a terrible song. And just because the title conveys the sentiment you want the end song to express doesn't mean it's a good song choice. They had... I thought they used Creep by Radiohead effectively at the beginning of the movie. I thought... No Sleep Till Brooklyn was a great choice. But that's it. The rest of the songs they chose were mistakes, by and large. And Rachel and I were driving back from the Butterfly Festival yesterday, and I told her, that's what happens when you get an SFJ to do an NFJ's job. It's 
they needed to make better choices. So, shame on them. I knew they were trouble when they walked in. Shame on them. They gave me cat aids. All right. So what's our next chore, you're probably wondering. What's the next thing we're going to do this morning to brighten our day and our life with the spirit of happiness everywhere you look? Well... Yes, I mean, here's the one thing that makes it a little bit complicated for me, is I don't have a gig bag for my guitar. I could go get one from the music store, I guess. No, I don't want any tips. It, you know, it's kind of a, a big stage and a lot of people there. Like, it's a, it's a stage, and yesterday, anyway, the Butterfly Festival was packed. I mean, like, everybody in Mariposa County came to it. So, I'm not a huge classic car show fan, but I gotta say, we really enjoyed looking at the classic cars yesterday, too. They had some really cool cars there. There's this convertible yellow 1940-something Oldsmobile there that is so pimping. I mean, it could not be any more pimping. Well, what, I, what we said yesterday was we need to practice, run through. We just play one song if we were going to do a mic, obviously. And um, we need to practice it a little bit. But I'm going to have to play that by ear as the morning progresses. I'd really like to. I think we'd kill it. You know... Did you see the vendor chocolate soup? I did not. And did Rachel find the witch in the woods shop? I don't know. There were a lot of different vendors there. Lots and lots of them. So. Um. And, you know, they had a cover band there playing, like, classic rock covers and stuff. For example, they played I'm Already Gone by the Eagles. It's one of the songs they played. We didn't listen to the band a whole bunch because we were, we were walking around and well, mostly, Rachel was taking a, a long time at this ring shop, making her selection very carefully for her turquoise ring. And uh, she was there for like 45 minutes. <laughs> well, thanks, Winston's mom. I was thinking the reason we'd kill it is has a lot to do with With the fact that it's not just me, you know, it's not just a guy with a guitar. It's me and a woman with a really pretty voice who's going to be looking kind of vulnerable and, and nervous, you know. It's a good combination because I won't be, I'll be maybe nervous, but... Uh, I'm used to performing in front of people. I've performed in front of people lots of times. So, 
As an SI person, that means I feel comfortable with it because I'm experienced with it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Frank Snyder has part of that arc. Big sneezes indeed. So I guess our second chore will begin in a moment or two. But I think we should pull a couple of bottle rips in order to prepare ourselves for our next chore. So everybody, take out your bongs and weed. Pack yourself a big bong rip. And let's pull a couple of bong rips together. Then you'll feel more yeah. You know Rachel's not a singer but she's very capable with practice. And ultimately, you don't really want a singer. The last thing I want singing along with my music is anybody who's like a real singer with their, oh, all that shit, you know. I don't need or want any of that stuff in my music. So Rachel's perfect. She's got that pure, sweet voice, and, you know, it's not about Rachel where, you know, people just root for her in some sense. They're, nobody's going to feel threatened or competitive against her. Is just going to say, oh my God, that was so sweet and beautiful. She's perfect. Okay, now. I mean, I gotta say that probably the best, <laughs> no, I, I think the best person I've ever worked with as a singer is Haley. Her, she was, like her work on, um, on, What's that song called? Like, what's the matter with? She, her work on that is phenomenal. Uh, and she did it in one take, just bam. But the thing is, I'd much rather perform with Rachel. Much rather perform with Rachel. Spacey was good, too. Cam didn't sing. Spacey was quite good, too. But the thing is, the reason I put Haley at the top is because I... And, like, I don't really need another male voice. Spacey was good. It helped me to not have to sing. But I don't really need that. Haley was in the ESFJ, where she is still. I mean, she's not dead. <laughs> Just because she's not in my life anymore doesn't mean she's dead. Um...
Casey was a little frustrating to work with because he didn't like to practice. He didn't need to practice very much. He memorized shit like bam. But he also didn't wasn't particularly responsive to my NI driven like no it has to be exactly this way or else it's gonna not pop you know and I countervalued they pushed back against that but yeah he was a good singer there's no doubt about that very competent No, I haven't invited anybody of the old crowd to the wedding. <coughs> the Kimberly world and mine no longer intersect. I saw someone who looked a lot like Kimberly. Yesterday, as we were walking back to the car from the festival, we're not walking to the festival from the car. And uh, no, we were driving away from the festival in the car. And I saw a woman who looked a lot like Kimberly, and I was just like, oh. It's like PTSD. That was a brutal relationship. Oh my God. It was just fighting all the time. We're both eights, me and Kimberly. We both have eight in our tri-type. And that doesn't work well. Eight, nine works beautifully. Me and Rachel, Rachel's a nine, I'm an eight. Her being a nine makes me very slow to anger and very quick to to stop being angry and my being an eight means that she doesn't have to really worry about me because the dynamic between eight and nine always works the same way. Eight gets mad when there's pushback. Modernity. <laughs> yeah, I got a good song out of my relationship with Spacey, which was Agave Weatherman. The best, the best multi-tracking of that song is one with him singing it and me singing the background vocals. And that that was his, for that song, Spacey was a great uh, collaborator. He killed it on that one. And the, the two vocals, him on the main vocal and me on the background vocal and the chorus sounds spectacular. Like the chorus of Agave Weatherman is something Rachel hasn't gotten down yet, but if we if we sit down and work on shit, she she get she can get anything, right? It's like once she's practiced something enough times, she's pitch perfect on it. But uh, it's just a matter of in, in this relationship, I'm the Spacey. <laughs> ah, Eric, you can't be the Spacey. You have to be the guy who knows you want to practice and what you want to practice and then practice it. Because, you know, it's only natural for almost everybody except Spacey <laughs> that you have to practice singing things a bunch before you can you get it down all the way, you know? And that's just normal, normal. I know I have to practice things a bunch to play them right, and I've been practicing them for years. And right now I'm not playing the guitar very much. So, you know, I'm a little out of practice.
a little rusty. Fortunately, I've been playing guitar for such a long time that even though I don't really play it at all for months, my, my calluses on my fingers don't really go away. I love my new guitar. It's funny, it's like a, I'm absolutely delighted with that new guitar, and yet I haven't been playing it hardly at all. It's so much easier to play than my electric guitar. I mean, my acoustic guitar. My acoustic guitar is only playable by people who've played a lot of acoustic guitar for a long time. Because you have to push down so hard to get the thing to not buzz and it's got high action you gotta have really strong hands I, my hands get tired playing that acoustic you gotta have a really strong left hand the right hand obviously doesn't make any difference That's assuming you're right-handed. If you're left-handed, it would be opposite. Well, one of the things I'm excited about is still just a possibility because I don't think our neighbor Les has RSVP'd yes to our wedding yet. Although I haven't checked recently, so I don't really know. Um, but I hope he does, because I'm really looking forward to having him, the conductor of the Yosemite Mariposa Symphony Orchestra, get to see that I have two people who play in the LA Philharmonic playing their classical music instruments at my wedding. I think, wow, Eric, that's so fancy. It's like I'm hanging out with some fancy people. Chow Wa needs to just go ahead and sue that school. She's got a great lawsuit on her hands because they are discriminating against her daughter based on her medical history, which is not allowed according to the Individual Disabilities Education Act. They're in direct violation of federal law. <laughs> they made the horrible mistake of informing this family that the reason she's not going to be allowed to place in advanced math even though her skills are advanced is because she missed a lot of school in seventh grade. But she missed a lot of school in seventh grade because she was sick with some thing that they took a while to diagnose. I don't even know what it is. But the point is, they fucked up. Now Chow Wa has a huge lawsuit on her hands that any lawyer would salivate to take because Polytechnic is like the richest private school in L.A. Except for Harvard Westlake or Marlboro School for Girls. Those are like the three richest schools in L.A. Only filthy rich people go to Poly. That um, defendant in the civil case has deep pockets and the law is entirely on your side. They fucked up royally. I hate that school. 
They have fucked with Jeffrey and his family for so much times. And you know what? I keep telling Jeffrey's mom, listen, the reason this is happening is not because you aren't doing a good enough job of bending over for them, as you seem to think. It's because you keep bending over for them. If you keep bending over for them, they will keep fucking you in the ass. <laughs> you need to... Don't just fight them. Win. Win definitively so they never fuck with you again. Her thought is like, well, don't make enemies. <laughs> they are your enemy. They made themselves your enemy. Now, defeat them. There won't be any that squirrel language for more cutlets. It is indeed, Winston's mom. I didn't know you you uh you spoke squirrel so well. Mac Daddy, he did not overestimate his ability to get it down perfect in one dry. He didn't believe in perfect. He thought that singing it a little bit different every time is fine. Like, for example, there was this song where, what song was it? Where he's supposed to be silent here, but I had a version of it where I had put a couple of words there. And he kept going back and forth. I said, no, it's supposed to be silent there. And he's like, it doesn't make any difference. Yes, it does. <laughs> like that. There will not be any harp player. Unfortunately, I don't know any harp players. You know, I bet nobody here knows any harp players. Do any of the nine people here know any harp players? I bet you not. <laughs> harp players aren't that common. I mean, who is musically inclined and goes, man... I want to rock out on the harp. Eric Thorne is a harp player? Wow. I mean, I guess you can fit a lot of different people on your journey boat. So, okay. Eric Thorne is a harp player. But he's from Sweden. Probably in Sweden, every other person plays the harp. Sweden seems like a harp-loving place. <laughs> Is it true, Eric Thor? Does every other person in Sweden play the harp? <laughs> it's like, when Swedes go out to see a band, they go out to see a band of nothing but harp players. It's like four harps. <laughs> Everyone's like... Oh, that's so beautiful. <laughs> Here's something I want to know. Yesterday, you watched an interview with a harp player who played on She's Leaving Home. How very interesting. Um, that's a, such a sad song. So sad. You're living alone for so many years. We don't like the fifth guy. <laughs> Out of the five people who live in Sweden, four know how to play the harp. <laughs> Hilarious. Excellent work, Eric Thor. You get five points. He's a weirdo who plays the stand-up bass with a bow. If somebody brought a stand-up bass to play bass with me and they took out a bow, I'd say, get that bow out of here. <laughs> You know a harp player too. 
I have dramatically underestimated the likelihood of people knowing a harp player. Two out of 12 people here know a harp player. That's one-sixth of the people, almost 20%. So, you know, shame on me. Shame on me. Good morning, Rachel, my beautiful darling. Eric Thor, I don't know if you've heard. I'm going to tell you because I don't think you were probably weren't here when I mentioned it before, but my cat has AIDS. And he gave cat AIDS to Taylor Swift. Is an ESFP YouTuber who plays the harp? Well, good for them. But I can't remember her name. So, <coughs> I think it's time now to do my second chore. Yes, that's right. I'll take you right along with me as we do this chore. It's a chore that I like to call taking out the trash. So first, I'm gonna grab this little bag of trash next to me. And I'm gonna do this low and slow. And the reason I'm gonna do it low and slow is because I have to take you with me. So I'm just gonna go outside first and put this in the garbage can. And then I'm going to come back inside, go into the pantry, and get another kitchen trash bag before I go into the kitchen. Eric, isn't that a little premature, you might be saying? Well, no, and I'll tell you why not. It's because I already know the kitchen trash is like the Simpsons kitchen trash where everybody trying to pile another piece of trash on top of a trash can that's already overflowing. So that's what our trash is like in the kitchen. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> I really need to take the trash out. So let's go take that trash out. And I'll show you <coughs> the shameful disgrace that is the state of my kitchen trash. Okay, I've gotten a trash bag from the pantry. Now, you want to be horrified? I'm going to show you something absolutely horrible. The trash is overflowing the trash can. I have to put trash up here. And there's trash on the floor. So I really need to take out the trash. Having brought this extra trash bag, instead of trying to meow all of this down into one bag, I'll put some of this extra trash in this bag. There. And there. Now I've got Two trash bags to paradise. 
I gotta pick up these extra trashes from the floor. Come on. And I put those in there. Okay, now let's go back outside to the trash cans. Why are we going back outside to the trash cans? Well, it's because I don't want to just carry these two bags of trash around all day. Okay. Also, it should be mentioned that I kept the box for the hat Winston's mom sent me. So I was trying to decide if I thought it fit or not. But I decided that it does fit. So, after wearing it quite a bit, I've decided it does fit. So I can throw that box away now. Because I don't need to return it and get a bigger size hat. There. I put the trash in the trash can now. Today's trash day, so at some point, I mean tomorrow is, so at some point today I have to take it up to the street. The trash truck seemed to have any problem taking the trash away. I wonder why the mailman can't put mail in the mailbox if the if her tire gets some mud on it. That horrible mailman woman. She's really chapped my hide. She has. No cap, as the young people say. Okay, now I'm going to teach you how to put a trash bag into a trash can. First you go like this to make it be open. Then you go like this. Then you put it around the edge like this. And then you put the trash, pan back, trash can back over there. And that's how you put it in a trash bag. Okay, you've completed another chore. So, what's the next required stage of activity? Really? Hey, Mrs. Mom, are you telling me that the bags I have are not the right size bags for that trash can? That I need that they're actually for a bigger trash can? I had no idea. That's very interesting. Thank you for telling me. Yeah, Mary Thor, you got it wrong. It's not stay weird, it's keep Portland weird. Also, don't call it Portlandia. Portland people will get mad at you. <laughs> I didn't because I saw a, either a bumper sticker or a shirt or a, something for sale that said, don't call it Portlandia. I have the rules right here. It says on here what rule I broke, purportedly, and what I have to do to fix it. And that they'll stop giving me my mail if I don't. Fix it by 514. By 514. What day is it right now? Let's see. Anyway, I am going to scold the living fuck out of the post office. They are going to get a thorough scolding. Yeah. 
here's how you can do cognitive functions of tarot cards. Swords are TI mostly. NI, TINI, you might call it. Cups are FI and maybe a little FE. Um, rods or wands or sticks, whatever you want to call them. That's TE and uh, any pentacles are TE and SE. What about SI? Probably cups. SI probably goes with cups. Well, the thing is, I don't really want to solve the problem. I want to win the battle. Pentacles might have a little SI in it too. Oh, as far as the major arcanas go, well, like, I see the fool as, as the ends in isolation. <laughs> I see the magician as N-E, mostly. I see the high priestess as N-I. I see uh, the hierophant as T-E. I see the Justice card is TI. The strength card is as SENI. I see the uh, devil card is SE. I see the sun card is SE. The world card is all of the functions working in harmony with each other, not being attentionally dominant, each taking its turn, right? But it's the, the successful integration of the self with one's cognitive function stack and one's circumstances. Rising is mostly a yeast thing. I see rising as linking directly to a person's propensity for yeast infections. I've got a strong propensity for yeast infections. I'm constantly getting yeast infections. I think it's because I like to dangle my penis into a bowl of yeast. That might have something to do with it. The stages of life are the houses, the rulers, the archetypes, the complexes, the energy in each house. Well, right now my kitty is looking a lot like the Empress card. I think the Empress card represents my cat Capillo. Doesn't she look like an empress right now? She's just owning that spot. She's like, this is my spot. I lie here. I'm so happy. <laughs> Yods and squares. Okay, so that would be the tower card. And... Uh, I think the nine of swords 
The Nine of Swords is either a yacht or a square, and the Tower card is either a yacht or a square. And I think that the Emperor and the Empress are the root chakras of man and woman, respectively. The archetypal root chakra. Yeah, she's an empress. The chariot card is obviously SE. You know? Um, yards are the finger of guys where the fake or finger of fate pokes you in the butt. It's a good song, listen, Bomb. You just wrote a pretty good song right there. Yards are the finger of God with your finger, 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 face, your butt. Yards are the fingers of gods where your fickle fingers, where fickle fingers of fate poke you in the butt. Um, what other? major arcana are that I've forgotten about. Oh, the moon. I see the moon as F-I-N-I. The moon is an F-I-N-I card. I see uh, the star as any S-E, any S-E. Maybe a little N-I in there as well. Because it's still at nighttime. And the moon's at nighttime. So the star should get, have a little bit F-I-N-I too. Well, I'm talking about the cards, the tarot cards, not the, the actual planet. I'm talking about what cognitive function is linked to the tarot cards. The tarot cards don't have to obey Jungian interpretation of astrology. <laughs> ah, thank you, Rachel. You, you remember some that I didn't mention yet. The hanged man, that's like SE polar. <laughs> I mean, or SE eight maybe, or SE four. I think anybody with SE seven, eight, or four sometimes feels like the hanged man. Least among those ENFPs, but all of those. Seven, eight, four. SE feels like the hanged man fairly often. Death. That one I don't know what to say about. I guess SE. Temperance, SI. The hermit. Thank you, Lou. I didn't do the hermit. Hmm. I'm going to say the Hermit's N-I-S-I. -I, both knowledge functions. Well, I'm doing my own interpretation here, Winston's mom, of what I think the cognitive functions go with which tarot card, okay? So, you and I can disagree about that, and neither of us is wrong, because it's a fair thing to have interpretive differences about. The Hermit, I said the Hermit, yeah, S-I-N-I. -I. And, uh, Judgment, I didn't do Judgment. Who? T-I-S-E, that's a weird one, huh? Judgment I think of as an STP thing.
Ah, whatever happened with Corey, I have not followed up with him as I should. It's such a complicated relationship. It's so challenging for me to navigate how to deal with because I already did this, but I'll do this again for you, Rachel. The magician I said was any. The high priestess, N-I, and the fool, both ends without anything else. If you can imagine somebody going through the world. Well, I don't view judgment in, as the same thing as being judgmental. I view judgment as the finality of a deliberated decision. So, passing judgment with I have a, used to have a shirt with a hangman on it and the hermit. Not sure their meanings, but cool. Yeah, they are cool images. Those those are OG ones. The OG uh, Rider Rider Weight deck, they're they're really like they've got a certain magical quality to them. Well, just finality, like verdict, right? I think of judgment as being equivalent to a verdict. Something's been well and fully deliberated, and the correct conclusion has been drawn or decision has been made. Well, I like a lot of other tarot decks, too. Lou Fay has a great tarot deck with these, like, it's different kind of animals on it or something. I really like that tarot deck with the the white deer looking one direction and one card, and then you see it from, from another angle and a different card, and it's, it's a really good deck. I also really like Rachel's uh, rock and roll deck, I think she calls it. I think it's called. You can't get it anymore, but it's got words on it. It's the one that taught me about tarot de decks, really. Because the ones that don't have words on it, I'm not natively... I'm not natively designed to interpret images. I can do it, but it's... You know, I like the I like the ones with the words on them at first because I could read the words and I know what that card meant. You know, <clears throat> but I still have to ask Rachel about various cards. Like, you know, what's the Eight of Swords again? I think either the Eight of Swords or Nine of Swords is anxiety. Yeah, that would be backwards. Lewis Carroll was writing about somebody who had a problem with an order of operations. You have to watch who you talk about with terror stuff. There are some genuine intuitives out there doing it, but there's tons of grifters. Oh, yeah. For sure. Um, a lot of people want to tell you you've got some sort of magical blockage in your life and if, all you need to do is sign up for weekly tarot sessions and you'll be and I'll, I'll work with your guides and you'll be cured I'm sure that happens a lot but that could never possibly happen to me <laughs> I'm way too intuitive for anybody to fool me like that Eight of Swords is feeling trapped mentally, feeling stuck. Hmm. Like a man swimming in maple syrup. Have you ever tried to swim in maple syrup before? You probably know.
<laughs> Your left says, I got the tower card some months ago, and no kidding, I had a house fire in my house and had to move out and change my entire life suddenly. Yeah, that's just, that's just a coincidence. Tarot cards are, are fun, but I, the thing that it makes me a little bit like worried about them for some people like Rachel is it's impossible for me to be bothered by a tarot reading. Like, I just go, oh, well, I, I, can, I can spin it in a positive way or I can just dismiss it entirely. I don't care. I, I, once I've done the tarot reading, I'm not thinking about it during <laughs> later on going like, oh, I got this card. Oh, no, I hope something bad doesn't happen. <laughs> but there are plenty of people who are like that. Uh, for example, my beloved wife, Rachel is quite a bit like that, so. <laughs> so, you know. But I appreciate the fact that every time she feels concerned about something like that, she talks to me about it because I'm pretty good at saying, miggity meow, miggity meow, you know. I'm pretty good at talking someone down from a tarot bad trip. For me, the cards just speak about energy in your space are coming towards you, not so much telling about how those energies will exactly play out. Well, I think that's correct, Ludafe. The terror does not predict the future. Fortune telling is nonsense. But it is the case that engagement with tarot cards is a significant way to meaningfully engage with your own identity and your own life in, and structure and create and see narratives of stuff in your life and around you. Like Lou DeFay says more concisely than I just said, the cards speak about energy in your space. So, and I gotta say, Lou is one of my very favorite, if not my very favorite tarot card reader. Not that I, I can't think of anybody else that I enjoy watching their tarot card videos. She's really good at pacing it. How much do you say about each card before going to the next one? That's the key skill in making a tarot card video. It's about pacing. You got to give some but not too much information about each card. Some but not too much interweaving between cards. And some, but not too much, overview summation. Yeah, you're, you do a great job. Um, and I think that I have always found reading tarot cards exceedingly easy. Like, because... I'm an any dom. I can just bullshit whatever about him forever, you know. But I think it's actually very hard to do well. You know? You you have to be cautious. You're dealing with people's identities and trying to express to them things about their identities through these cards. And ideally the work the cards are doing in conjunction with the reader produces uh, a positive narrative for the listener without just bullshitting them that everything's roses and sugar and spice, right? So it's a tough line to walk. <laughs> I'm not such a great tarot reader because if if I pull out the tower card, I'll be like, oh, well, everything's got to fall apart. <laughs> or, you know, or I just joke about it or whatever. It's like you got to take it seriously and 
and care about how you're crafting it because there's a lot of people out there like Rachel who when they hear these things they take it very seriously there's not probably a lot of people out there like Rachel because she's an INFJ and so she's especially susceptible to being told by third parties who she is and especially desirous of it you know but and then she uses her intuition to determine whether what they're saying about her is correct or not. And if they're wrong, she's very bothered by it, but she can't really justify to herself for sure that they're wrong because she only has the NI half of it finished, not the TI part. So then she talks to me about it and I say to her, well, the reason it bothers you is because your intuition is correct. That person is wrong. <laughs> this is what INFJs have to do because of their super unconscious SI. Yeah, that thing that you just said there, Luda Fay, every good tarot reader should have that on their wall. I don't want to tell or lead people. Just provide opportunities for insight. All good tarot readers should have a sign on their wall that says that. The same is the case for typologists, by the way. <laughs> I don't want to tell people what to do or lead them at all. I just want to uh, convey to them information that's correct. So if you're watching a typologist whose videos are all like, what the ISTP should do for a job or something like that, they are doing it wrong. Stop doing it wrong. Start doing it right. You're so damn long. Stuck in this fight. Okay. Hopefully some Woodland friends will come back. You know what though? Winston's mom pointed out something important earlier. The squirrel was telling me to provide more cutlets. So I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get some more cutlets. I'm going to do a quick cutlet provisioning. And then I'll return. There, I put some cutlets.
And it's just a matter of time before the woodland friends come to feast upon them. See, they're talking to each other right now. They're saying, hey, you just put out some cutlets. You want to go check it out? And they're like, why well, he's still standing there, though. Uh, the other bird's like, it's probably fine. He never bothers us. And the uh, other bird's saying, well, I've got a video conference right now, but I'll be there in like five minutes. Come, woodsman friends, come and sup upon the cutlets. Sup upon the cutlets. <sighs> it's a good name for, the, for a band. Sup upon the cutlets. You know, woodland cutlets isn't a bad name for a band either. <laughs> <laughs> the Woodland Cutlets. That's a pretty good band name. Don't you think? I think it's a pretty good band name. The Woodland Cutlets. Or Johnny Depp Cosplay is another good band name. Because apparently Johnny Depp likes to dress up as characters he's been in movies. Like Edward Scissorhands and that pirate guy. Rachel told me this the other day. Uh, that crow, when it flew by, I could hear his wings so clearly going, as it flew by. Don't be disappointed, friends. Woodland cutlets take a while to take effect sometimes. So anyway, I don't know if you can see very well. Okay? But there's my mailbox up there. All right? The road is right there. It's right there. There's like this much space on the side of the road. How do I get both my hands in this picture? <laughs> it's like this much space in the road beside the road that has some mud on it. It's not probably even mud anymore. It's just dirt now. You've got to be kidding me. Well, I plan to put an end to this postal tyranny. Or at least complain about it. And if I can't win, well, I mean, the thing is, I'm going to the telephone company first. I'm going to show them this thing and say, look, they're not going to give me my mail if you don't fix this or if I don't fix this. I could get some gravel and fill it myself, but do you guys want me filling over the top of your lines? I think that's the question I'm going to ask them. <sighs> but 
But I am going to definitely stress to the phone company that I am not upset at them about this. That I love Sierra Tell. Sierra Tell is great. Fantastic. Best phone company I've ever been affiliated with. However, my experience of comparing mail carriers has been shockingly less satisfying. (laughs) That's because... The post office is not a private business. Although I'm also not happy with our propane people but they're from Madera County so what do you expect from Madera County you know the post office is from the federal government so what do you expect from the post office they actually do a remarkably good job by and large but we just have the lemon among mail carriers we bought a lemon that Toyota of Orange. Oh no, you won't get a lemon at Toyota of Orange. No, you won't get a lemon at Toyota of Orange. Um, Scrappy just let you pet him for two seconds? One of your squirrels let you pet him? That's crazy. Have I ever jumped over that cement wall into the unknown? I mean, you just have to climb over it onto the the dirt that's behind it. It's not like there's a drop off behind it. It's just this big piece of woods that they left there when they built the house. And it's behind that massive retaining wall. Hero Lamb says squirrels are dumb. Ludaface says, no, squirrels aren't dumb. <laughs> These squirrels don't seem dumb. They seem pretty spry and alert. Well, I might be able to pet one of the baby squirrels. Their names are uh, someday. I mean, not right now, but the baby squirrels, one of them, well, he's just not very SI focused here, Lamb. <laughs> Have I ever felt cognitively distorted enough to the point where cognitive functions or all of your thought processes in general were hard to do? Uh, Like, maybe after waking up from a surgery in which I was anesthetized. I've had a couple of those in my life. I had one with my appendix, but I don't really remember that. That was in fifth grade. And then I had one when I was 18. Listen. Ludafe, you're not being bold enough in your claims. Squirrels are geniuses. Squirrels are known as the geniuses of the rodent world. My mom never had any hospital stay in her whole life um, except for giving birth to me until she was uh, four months from death. She was an SI dom. And she was insanely healthy. Like, never got sick. When she was a little girl, she got stung by a scorpion.
because when she was a little girl, the scientists at the University of Arizona, or it was either, well, it's the one that's in Tempe. There's a, there was some college or university in Tempe, Arizona, and the scientists there were using scorpion venom to do research. And they paid children a nickel apiece to collect scorpions. <laughs> How crazy is that? But my mom did not get stung by a scorpion while collecting scorpions for the scientists, which she did to make money. She got stung by a scorpion on an entirely other occasion when she wasn't looking for scorpions at all. She was at her, she went to her friend's house and like said, can, can my friend come out to play? And the mom said, we're still eating dinner, you have to wait. And she like kind of kicked at this box outside and a scorpion bit her. She was probably barefoot, I guess. Well, you know, my mom didn't have any choice but to be at the mercy of people who took ownership of her agency, but that was her very loving husband who gave her the best care money could buy. and was there all the time for a long time until COVID. I mean, COVID, it's like separating an old man from his wife who's dying of dementia is not acceptable. Rock star scientist Dr. Herbert Stanky dazzled audiences on his 1950s TV show and created a life-saving scorpion anti-venom. Oh, interesting. Well, maybe he did it with scorpions my mom collected. As a little girl. I wonder if anybody, like, criticizes him for hiring, paying children to collect scorpions. <laughs> <laughs> I guess a nickel a piece is pretty good for back then. My mom said that uh, there was this like rest area thing near her house that they had stupidly put palm fronds as the as the roofs on these like the sunblock on these little benches and of course they dried up immediately so they were just dry dead palm fronds and that she and her friend would go there and poke at those with a stick and scorpions would fall down and they'd collect them <coughs> I'm curious how do INFJs deal with empirics are they received then just completely abstracted? I mean, they deal with empirics in a very SE way in terms of interfacing. It's how they work around TE polar. So when they're interfacing with physical objects and getting live time empirical data back from them, it's SE trial and error. Well, maybe if I turn it this way, maybe if I push it this way, they don't try to TE it really. Um, in terms of dealing with empirics in some sort of like academic paper, like, like, uh, critiquing, critiquing someone's analysis that's based on particular empirics, either critiquing the linkage between the analysis and the empirics or critiquing the methodology of the empirics. That would depend entirely on 
That would depend entirely on the INFJ uh, and how much attention in their life they would given towards uh, towards those kinds of, of matters. So INFJs are very much impacted by SI, even though they're impacted by it very unconsciously. What they learn and what they spend attention intuiting about ends up being what they're good at intuiting about. There are some INFJs out there who spend a lot of attention on TI stuff, and they end up good at at TI stuff, like that guy, uh, Sam Harris. He's got good TI. I believe he's an INFJ. But the, ra- the variability between third slot TIs is very wide. Let me answer now Dawson K's question. I believe Kurt Cobain was an INFJ. No, <coughs> that's as he. <coughs> TE is looking at <coughs> looking at the the whole thing, observing and making solvency calculations like what's likely to be the way of of approaching this is going to work. Um, like when I couldn't figure out how to change the blade on my bandsaw one time in Laverne, I asked Cameron to come over and help me fix it, and uh, he just spent a long time looking at it and putting his hands all over it before he did anything. That's te. It's being good at anticipating and executing the correct order of operations in a solvency situation five cents could buy some good candy when I was a child we could turn in soda bottles for a nickel well my mom you know, she was born in 38 so she probably did that just right after World War two or even maybe at the very end of World War II, she started doing that kind of stuff, like collecting scorpions, I would guess. So there's like house arrangers or remodeler ladies or TE. Yeah, those people who are like, get your objects in order and organize everything so that you know where everything is, everything has its place, and everything's in its place. Those are TESI people. <laughs> That's a very STJ thing to do. Okay, so what's my next next chore, though? Don't we have another chore? <laughs> Sounds like a terrible job. It does to me, too, Hero Lamb. But, you know, STJs like to do STJ stuff. It gives them satisfaction, obviously, you know? Just like I like to do any stuff. Like here I am live streaming this morning because I can't do chores without an audience. <laughs> you know, it's like I want to, I don't really feel like doing a bunch of chores silently, but if I'm explaining to you how to do these chores, then somehow it's entertaining to me. Other people might be like, how could you possibly be entertained by what you're doing, Eric? You're just talking about different things with people in the chat and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah, people think it's not productive and it's useless. And I, yeah, I know. I, uh, I've been subject to that oppression my whole life. I don't feel very oppressed, though, actually. <laughs> I feel like the luckiest man in the world. Even luckier than Joe DiMaggio? Definitely.
Okay, so the next chore though is probably the most exciting chore for the viewing audience. Because it deals with the dangerous creatures known as wasps. Now, Rachel and I have already told you about our encounter with the so-called velvet ant or cow killer ant. Which is actually a larval form of wasp. Here's one wasp's nest. And here's another wasp's nest in the making. So, how, and there's one wasp there. So how am I going to get those wasps? Well, I'm going to use a shop vac. I'm going to vacuum them up. That way I don't have to use my hands to touch them. And they just go into the vacuum cleaner. So, where's the shop vac? It's right there. Now, let's get the shop back and bring it outside. This came with the house, by the way, which is very nice. Very convenient to have all this stuff come with the house, you know? Like the cat box scooper. Oh, no. Yeah, okay, that's fine. It doesn't really need those wheels. My pants are falling down. I need to just tighten my belt tighter. I have to walk like this now because my pants are falling down so much. Okay. Let's put the vacuum down here. Let's put the meow down here. Let's pull up my pants. Let's do it, do it, do it. So, conveniently, because this beautiful, glorious, wonderful home, it just delights continually with its conveniences. Conveniently, there's an outlet right here. Okay, now hopefully no wasps fly out of the vacuum. I vacuumed up two wasps. There's not that many wasps. But you know, what can I say to myself about that except, great job. You got rid of the, the wasps. Now, I'm just going to look around a little bit and see if I see any more obvious wasp nests. Wasp nests. I don't see any right there. I don't 
see any over here. I see a beautiful caterpillar. It's going to make a Christmas and become a butterfly. I see a caterpillar right there. But that's not a wasp. And the caterpillar is fine. It can stay there. I don't see any wasps over here. So far, so good. Down here. All right, looking pretty good. This is the thing the telephone people had to work on before. Are there any wasps under here? Oh, yes, there are. There are wasps right up there. Underneath there, I see two wasp nests in the making. So I'm going to have to get a ladder out, vacuum those guys up. I don't know if I feel like doing that right now or not. It's going to require the tall ladder. And I have to carry a vacuum cleaner up the tall ladder. I could put a short ladder next to the tall ladder to put the vacuum cleaner on. That's what I'll do. Now that's good TE right there. What I just did right there, thinking that, that's good TE. This is a horrible, horrible thing. Oh no. Do you see it? This paint here. I need to paint this whole thing. This wood is rotten. Oh. Well, you know what they say. That's home ownership. Oh shit. Look up there. We got bigger wasp nest right up there. How am I going to get up there? That's going to be difficult to get to. I don't know how I'm going to get up there. How do I get way up there? I have no idea how I'm going to get up there. I don't think I am going to be able to get up there. Huh. Well, I guess I need a power washer or something to squirt them down with. Cause I don't know how to get way up there even though I have a very tall ladder. I don't think it's that tall. Maybe it is, I don't know. But it's like I have to lean it against this thing. Yeah, I don't know what to do about those ones. Okay, now I've got to put the shop back back in the garage. This is a old shop back, right? But it's super powerful. It's like they made these things good the old days. At least I cleaned up our most pressing wasp problem, which was the one right there by the kitchen door. But I've got two more wasp problems to deal with. For right now, I guess I just put this back in the garage. But after pulling some long rips, I can solve this garage. Um, overhang wasp problem even though it's high up it's very doable but the other one oh, that seems pretty sketch I'm trying to get all the way up there be something worth consulting Cameron about when he gets here. <coughs> He's coming up in a couple weeks. I 
You can mix dish soup. Yeah, it's, uh, that's, thank you for saying that, Hero Lamb. I, I really love Mariposa. I was saying, saying to Rachel yesterday, I'm a Mariposa Otaku. Mariposa Otaku. Living by your wits is always knowing where the wasps are. Oh, hey, Cameron's here. Now you get to make glue or something out of it. What did the naked people use that for? <laughs> I don't know. Well, the thing is, termites are a big problem, but not as big a problem with this house as most, because very little of this house is wood. Almost all of this house is other materials. Dawn. Dawn also works best for beginning days. That's a good But I must say, my vacuuming approach worked pretty well. You know? And the nice thing about vacuuming them is it doesn't just kill them, it cleans it up. It cleans up their wasp nest. Wasp nest. Wasp nest. <sighs> yeah, I love this place. I love this house. I love this county. I love everything about it here. figure out a way to get those other nests. I thought it was an ISTJ channel when I saw you owned it on the ladder. I didn't bring out the ladder today. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I will get up to that, that one that I can get to and get those. But this one over here, man, I don't know. It's so high up and it, you can't lean it directly against the house. There's this overhang thing you got to lean against. And so I don't even know how to get up there. It, it, it's gonna, you're going to be surprised when you come back, Cameron. It is so gorgeous around here right now. It's so green. The last time you were here was uh, all covered in snow. It is just a glorious spring. And uh, I'm looking forward when you get here. For us to actually make it all the way to Sweetwater Creek. Rachel and I have tried on multiple occasions, but we have not been able to get back to the Sweetwater Creek mine. So hopefully we'll be able to get all the way back there this time. What stopped us last time was another... Um, was another um, another tree had fallen across the path, the, the road. And somebody had tried to chainsaw it already, but they didn't finish the job. Instead, they ended up driving over it in their little wilderness car. But that seemed a little too sketch for me. It was too big of a log. I thought, this is not a good idea. I had already tackled this little river that, you know, was, had all these big rocks in it. It was like, bang! You know, and I went across it, and I was like, oh, shit, I'm going to break my little car. But it was fine. We got out of there all fine and everything, but we couldn't get past that one big log. So Andre says, when can I come visit you? Well, 
if you want to visit us and I and you want to be vetted by me, which means you have to have a video conference and chat with me for a little bit. Then if if you're cool, then I will invite you to our wedding, July 8th. So if you want to do that, then email me and I'll set up a time for a video conference. Meow, you want to go outside? Mr. Man? No, you just want to meow. Well, he just wants to meow for some reason. So anyway, let's pull a couple of bong rips. I think I've earned them by vacuuming those wands. Wasp. Wasp nests. I'm just going to call them waspatoriums from now on. It's easier to say. I vacuumed two waspatoriums this morning. And maybe later today I'll vacuum a couple of those are up there. <laughs> but presumably, I'm guessing these wasps must be the wasps that those or they might be anyway, the wasps that that velvet ant or cow killer ant that we saw, those are larval forms of wasps. So I wonder if the wasps that we're vacuuming are the wasps that come out of those cow killer ants. It doesn't seem like they're big enough because the cow killer ant is huge for an ant. It's not an ant, but you know, it looks like an ant, a furry ant. They're enormous, and uh, compared to every other ant you see, anyway. And they are they seem like they're bigger than the wasps that I just vacuumed up. So, I don't know. I, I would guess that those cow killer ants might turn into a bigger kind of wasp than, than the regular size wasps that I just vacuumed. But I could be wrong about that. I guess I could Google it. I could look at a picture of what kind of wasps cow killer ants turn into. Then I could find out. Those wasps that I vacuumed up were yellow and red. So. Another bummer. Let me pull a little bit of weed from this big bag of weed that I pulled out of the freezer or got out of the freezer. I stashed a wasp's nest in my desk drawer, a waspatorium in my desk drawer after examining it under my microscope. I was around nine or 10. My mother was not happy when she opened the drawer and a nest of angry wasps escaped. <laughs> Are you supposed to take the waspatorium without any wasps in it? Paper wasps. There's this store in Mariposa called Okie Dokie, and it's usually closed, but it was open yesterday for the festival, and uh, I always kind of wondered what that store was. Well, it's an artichoke themed store. So it's called Okie Dokie, Okie Dokie Artichokey, right? They got shirts in there that say that. 
but it's definitely rich man's wife's boutique. <laughs> the SFJ wife's boutique. It is absolutely adorable. It's so cute. It's on this adorable little street in this adorable little town. And it's all about artichokes. And you just know, this woman has artichoke themed everything at her house. <laughs> She's an ESFJ living the artichoke dream. Thank you for using the correct term this time, Winston Spelman. Well, I appreciate it. She says, that's why I was examining my waspatorium to see if there were any wasps inside. Hmm. Well, you know, that as well as I love. So, there's a pretty good chance there's gonna be wasps in there. Oh, no. Oh, yes. It's okay, I found my lighter. Everybody can stop panicking now. I tell you, lighters around here are dying left and right. I need a new torch. I need to just order one. This torch is so old. Maybe I could clean it with acetone. And maybe it'll work again. I don't know. But it's like clogged or something. And I'll show you what I mean. This thing doesn't let out gas when you turn open it. And then you shake it up a whole bunch, it'll let out a little gas. See? So I need a new one of these. I can't torch any boner right through there. Baby artichokes. We saw baby artichokes in the farmer's market. Uh, they were so small. And I went to the vendor. I said, you call those artichokes? No, I didn't do that. Um... Well, could I invent a better lighter? No, big lighters are the best, but really the best lighter is a burns o -matic torch with an automatic sparker. That's the best lighter. I need to get another one because my other burns o -matic broke. But, uh, You've got to eat some butter. Or else you are my mother. What other chores do I have to do today? Well, I mean to clean up the woodland cutlet mess. Because, you know, the woodland friends are not very tidy with their sunflower seed shells. I was thinking of shop backing up those sunflower seed shells as well. But, uh, I also need to vacuum inside the house. That's fun. But, I don't know if I'm going to do that right now. Like, I see, like, this dust in the, in the heater put out air thing from up there. Uh, makes me want to vacuum it. 
<sighs> well, tomorrow I'll have speed, hopefully. If I don't, I'm going to be pretty fussy at the CVS. I'm not going to yell at anybody, but I'm going to say, hey, CVS, look. This makes me unhappy that I can't get my drug on time. Is there any way I can solve this problem? You've indicated to me it's not your problem because you can't get the drug. So whose fault is it? Who can I call and yell at? We'll see what they say. We will see what they say. If they just have my drug tomorrow, then we don't have to see what they say. We just get the drug and move along in life. You can also buy those long-handed Swifters, Swiffers that up to the ceiling fans and have extendable arms. Well, Winston's mom, I want you to know something important. I can actually vacuum the top of my ceiling fans with the various attachments that I have with my special whole house vacuum. So I don't need to get a swimmer because I can reach everything that I want to vacuum with my vacuum plus attachments standing either in various places. I don't even need a ladder except for one fan. And that fan, I will show you right now, needs vacuuming. <laughs> but because I can't get to it without a ladder, I have not vacuumed it yet. It's this one. I could half-assedly get to it without a ladder. I could reach up there with the attachments and meow at it. I could probably get to it from here, actually. Yeah, I could totally get to it from here. Like, I vacuumed all the top of that thing right there. And it was very satisfying. Did I show it to you properly? That little ledge? It was all dirty before. This needs vacuuming. You can see the dust on it. I could totally get to that though from either there on the stairs or from up here. If I got to it from here, I could vacuum it, no problem. What about over there though? That spot, I could, <coughs> I could, I probably have to get a ladder to vacuum up over there. Yeah, by that window, on that window. So it needs vacuuming a lot. I see cobwebs, a couple of dead flies. These are things that have to be dealt with before the wedding. I want this place in tip top shape. This room's the only room that's ready to go because it has curtains already. That's nice curtains for you. Here are curtains. It also has a TV in here. I didn't even know that. So, uh, this room's ready to go. For guests, you know. It's ready to go for camera when he comes up this month. These other rooms need a lot of work. <laughs> this room, well... This is Rachel's clothes anxiety room where she frets over how to deal with her, her clothes. This room is Rachel's room. So it's pretty lived in. 
but she'll move into the master bedroom. We'll get this place cleaned up for Delilah before, um, before the wedding. Hi, darling. Hi, handsome. That looks delicious. Oh, would you like those salads? Mm, if you don't mind making me one. Sure. Which salad was that? The spring mix. Okay. Did you finish it all? No. Okay, cool. You like that? I mean, I don't care which salad it is. I mean, did we finish the one from the farmer's market? Well, it, it, it's good. I opened it, so. No, no, I know. It's good. I'm saying, did we finish the one from the farmer's yeah. market? Oh, okay, cool. They're not staying for that long, this is long. So, we need to put up some curtains. We have curtain rods galore here. And I think we've got some of those scoopy things that you attach to the wall. If they're, Rachel said a couple of them are broken in her room. So, I think we have those here. <coughs> So curtains aren't going to be such a big deal. Long term, I want to put these things in the day room, Rachel's room, so that there are shutters there, just like there are down here. But for the other rooms, curtains are fine. I'd actually like to take out the Venetian blinds in the master bedroom, which I fucking hate, and put up just regular curtains. Like the ones in the black room. That may be something we can do when the camera comes to. Not that it's like the most fun thing to do, but um, that could be good. Yeah, well, I mean, that also, that's something I can easily do enough myself. I just have to take down the Venetian blinds, which is unscrew a few screws, and put in those scoopy holder things for the um, curtain rods. And Put the curtain rods in. And we have to get buy some curtains. We can just order some online. I like the ones that are in the black room. Yeah, me too. We you should get curtains like that. Okay. Okay. We could probably get them on Amazon or something. Yeah. Yeah. Go back to the on something like that. Bye, bye, and bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> bed bath and bullshit is a good name for bed bath and beer. Their store is full of so much bullshit. It reminds me of that movie that I watched with Rachel and I watched it before I got with Rachel even. Um, do you remember that movie about that old rich guy who lives in like some exurb of New York and, and in, the, in the financial industry and then he gets divorced because from the wife who is the wife of Tony Soprano. Yes. Do you remember what that was called? No. Anyway. It was good though. It's this movie that I really liked a lot, actually. And it has in it the lady who was in the Sopranos is Tony Soprano's wife. Right. Eve Falco. Eve Eve Falco? Edie Falco. Edie Falco. Edie Falco is in it. So it's a movie about rich people in upstate New York who are like, I don't know, a lot of crazy shit happens in the movie, really. Yeah. It, it was, it's, I found it to be a very compelling movie for some reason. Thank you. You're welcome. And so I'd recommend it to everybody if I knew what it was called. I'll check it out. Okay. Does she get divorced? Yeah. Okay. 
And then it turned out she was cheating on him. Mmm. Delicious salad. Now, Daddy, I invited you already. Do you not get the invitation? I checked your email, woman. Maybe it went to your spam folder. I don't know. It seems unlikely. I have no idea how to spell E, Falco. Well, Mac Daddy, that makes two of us. I don't check my email very often either. Well, we don't expect very many people to come. It's a short notice destination wedding for everybody. You know, our immediate families will be here. Though I was here. Well, I'll be here. And Rachel's mom and dad will be here. Or check your spam folder or something. I don't know. I'll, I'll resend it. Let's find you. Here you are. Unopened, it says. You're 917A, right? That's you, right? Let me see your response to that. You know, I invited Winston Volunteer. I didn't bother inviting Abraham and Susie because I know there's no way they will be able to come from Norway. So I didn't bother inviting them. They, you know, he just started a job aqua farming in Norway. So... Okay, great. Thank you, man. Thank you, Mackenzie. <laughs> I don't need to send it again. Do I need a new hat? I have a new hat. Which I've been wearing. I don't know if I'll wear a hat during the wedding or not. That's something Rachel and I need to have a long sit down and talk about. Because as we learned yesterday during the Kentucky Derby, what and whether you have a hat on matters a great deal.
Oh, well, yeah, we, we used the invitation service to send out invitations. And it costs less than a hundred dollars, which is a lot cheaper than sending out real invitations. So, okay, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go outside, we're gonna have a, a soothing, calming, relaxing cigarette. Then I'm gonna come back inside, I'm gonna end the stream, and then Rachel and I are gonna have a long conversation about whether or not I should wear a hat at the wedding. Because now I'm trying to think, maybe she should wear a hat. Maybe she should wear a Kentucky Derby hat. <laughs> All right, you don't see that very often in weddings. You don't see the bride in her wedding dress with a Sith Lord Kentucky Derby hat on. But you know, we like to set new trends around here. Oh, Woodland friends, there's so many of you. I'm so proud of the goodness of your ways. Well, the Blue Jays flew away. I guess they were terrified by my alarming presence. If you guys haven't seen it yet, by the way, check out the community tab. We're talking with famous people. And I think you're going to be pretty pleased by what you see there. It is a picture of me and Rachel with Sasquatch. Yeah, the real Sasquatch. We met him yesterday in town. He's a nice guy. your orangey chest and your yellowy stomach. You're such an attractive bird. And I don't think those orangey birds are actually Orioles. Yeah, they're getting along fine. I'm going to call them Oreos. We've got one Oreo at the party, one Blue Jay at the party, one Squirrel at the party, and over here to the left out of your frame, we've got a Sparrow. Here it comes. Oh, and he went to the hillside and didn't go to the wall. Even the blue jay lands down there. That's, that's an idyllic woodland scene. You got the one on the, standing on the right, the squirrel, and the blue jay next to the squirrel. That's, that's like, that's like hitting for power, hitting for average, and having a high on base percentage. I did it, woodland scene, woodland friends, enjoying their woodland cutlets. 
Yes, you're enjoying your woodland cutlet. You can hear one of the squirrels up in the tree is a little fussy about something. I think maybe one of the other squirrels took some of his cutlets. Okay, Woodland friends, I'll see you later. Meow. I'm gonna go put the cutlet cup back in the back in the kitchen where it goes. Meow. Yes, you're a very good meower. Put these things away. Just by taking out the trash, I've reduced the squalor dramatically. <laughs> One way to bury the lead. <laughs> yeah, well, I uh, posted it just right before I started the stream, and then I forgot until right now to mention it. So, anyway, have a great day. I very well might stream later. Who knows? I'm feeling pretty streamy these days. So, um, I'll talk to you soon. Goodbye and good luck and good night.